Um, so our next young global enabler, Dr. Yusuf. Uh, he is a system professor in the Department of Bioengineering in Tagore University, India. He has done plenty of research in the field of food engineering and technology. So today he will share his speech on comprehensive valorization of agro-industrial food waste through green extraction techniques, futuristic food engineering. Dr. Yosef, the floor is yours now. Uh, hello. Hey, Dr. Yosef. Uh, hi. Okay, please feel free to start any time when you're convenient. Okay, that's okay. Uh, can I share my slides? I'm going to give the control to you. Okay, thank you. Will you be able to accept? Okay, great. Yeah, we are ready. Uh, uh, well, uh, I'll be uh, as um, uh, discussed uh, previously, that uh, I'll be discussing the topic that is uh, comprehensive valorization of agro-industrial waste via green extraction, uh, which I believe is the futuristic food engineering. As I've been, uh, uh, my field of work is uh, food engineering, uh, and uh, uh, this is my research, actually, uh, which I will be discussing with you. And uh, uh, the comprehensive valorization, the term itself says that we will be looking forward towards the valorization of agro-industrial waste, which I believe uh, can be of a very valuable significance. Uh, and uh, that I'll be uh, giving you a brief idea uh, about. And Yeah, uh, when we talk of agro-industrial valorization, uh, well, I believe it's a steaming topic. It's a very, uh, you know, uh, hot topic these days because uh, that will definitely lead to the resource conservation. If we look for uh, the waste valorization, it will definitely help in, you know, achieving our economical values as well. And uh, definitely it will be helping in, you know, sustainable environment as well. Because uh, when we check out the percentage waste uh, which uh, has been, you know, added by the food. Uh, in case of the industry, it's around 53%, and household waste accounts for around 42%. And while the distribution waste is is around 5%, well, you can see that a significant amount of waste comes from the industries. When we talk of food industries in particular, and what exactly we do here, the industries they are not working well enough for that. They are not looking for the, you know, uh, utilization of this waste. And they just uh, throw it into the open, and just it leads to the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, the pollution of the environment. And now uh, people are also working like they are doing, you know, they're trying to make biogas out of it, or use it as a compost, or maybe uh, it can be used as a feedstock as well. But looking for the sustainable solution, and the sustainable solution is not this exactly. And uh, this is what I felt during my research program that what we have to do is to look for a sustainable solution of this waste. And here you can see in the slide that I have developed a, a simple addition uh, process. It's, it's, I believe, a formula which I call the futuristic food engineering. It's a simple, you know, three step process which I see that we have to specify exactly uh, what we are looking for and the different ways which I have uh, worked on. I felt that extraction of different components from this weight can be a valuable and a sustainable solution. And the first thing which I, you know, built it in the model was to, you know, we had to look for the extraction of these products. But at the same time, we need to have a sustainable extra, uh, extraction solution for this. And uh, then only we can get, uh, you know, 
our objective of reducing this waste and that i have also uh, you know i have uh, you know motto for that that is we have to work for reducing this agro waste to no waste so that will lead to the valorization of agricultural waste and uh, now specifying on the waste because it's a lot of waste when we look into the industry there is a lot of waste but we have to specify ourselves to a certain amount of uh, account of waste and what i chose was uh, the citrus waste uh, since citrus is one of the largest produced food in the world and around you know uh, 110 metric tons of uh, fruit is you know produced globally and out of which around 10% is almost 10% Uh, is produced in india and since it's producing such a huge amount and most of it around 30 uh, one third of it uh, is uh, taken by industries for the processing uh, for juice and a lot of waste is left behind because if you see uh, in case of citrus uh, fruits uh, almost 50% of it uh, accounts for waste it consists of the peel which is you know removed while processing Uh, the waste also consists of the pulp, which is reduced uh, after juice processing. Maybe seeds as well. So that much of it accounts for almost 50%, and it it's a huge, huge waste. And uh, when we talk of uh, peel only, if we throw it into the uh, landfills, that will lead to the you know land water pollution. And as I have previously said also that if we look for uh, the solution like maybe we can use it as a cattle feed or a compost. but that will also there are problems associated with for the greenhouse uh, gases now uh, in my model i can fit like i had the first uh, thing which i had uh, i was doing was to specify on the waste and in that case i specified on the citrus waste because of its uh, huge amount and 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 such a large a large quantity of that being thrown into the open areas now the second thing was to look into the you know sustainable or suitable Uh, technique for extraction uh, uh, that uh, i tried while working and when i tried to work out the various methods of extraction which we already had or which uh, exactly are there in the uh, you know present scenario as well we can differentiate them into two categories that's like traditional techniques and the modern or novel techniques in case of traditional techniques there were a lot of problems associated with them that they were taking a lot of time a uh, lot of solvents were used for the extraction of these valuable compounds and uh, definitely it was using a lot of economics uh, were going into that as well but in, uh, in comparison to the novel extraction techniques like uh, i have worked on various techniques uh, i'll be i'm not be specifying uh, them uh, you know but i'll be giving you an idea that they they were taking very short uh, you know time processing time the consumption of solvent and other chemicals which are used for the extraction Uh, the consumption of them was very less and and the energy which was used uh, while processing that was also very uh, less and significant so all these positives uh, let me to take this uh, you know extraction technique and working on different extraction technique uh, led to me uh, uh, led me to uh, two different extraction techniques that is microwave assisted extraction technique and ultrasound assisted extraction technique Uh, well, you can see I have worked on various uh, extraction techniques, maybe solvent extraction, soxlet extraction, enzyme-assisted extraction, uh, so, um, uh, this supercritical fluid extraction. But uh, what I specified on was microwave and ultrasound-assisted extraction. After going through various trials and various uh, experiments, uh, I found that they were very uh, effective. Uh, they were very economically, they were very viable and somehow they were uh, effective in uh, you know uh, using less solvent and, and the economical uh, viability was also very good so uh, again when i checked my model which i was working on uh, i had already specified uh, the waste product which we were working on and then we had to specify on the treatment of uh, various extraction techniques and finally we reached to the conclusion of having the extraction techniques uh, of microwave and ultrasound so i thought that they will be the best uh, objectives uh, for achieving our results and uh, then again uh, here you can see why i uh, chose these two extraction techniques uh, because when i compared uh, this ultrasound assisted extraction and microwave assisted extraction 
techniques with the conventional or traditional type of extraction techniques uh, uh, various uh, when we go deeper into the you know uh, the actual reactions which are taking place and the principles and uh, you know the techniques behind this uh, here it's, it's just a brief idea of this i won't be going into the detail exactly so it's more of a technical point of view so so the main thing was that these extraction techniques were very effective uh, they were you know the the results which we achieved they were of a better quality in comparison to the conventional extraction techniques and so uh, we decided to move further uh, with these extraction techniques to achieve our uh, objectives uh, this is also again the mechanism as associated uh, with the with the uh, with the reactions which were uh, happening inside the reactants, uh, the various uh, extraction during the microwave assisted and the ultrasound assisted extraction techniques. So uh, actually, it were these are the reactions which are ha happening at the atomic and micro uh, level. So uh, th uh, this is uh, a bit difficult to describe here. So I'll be skipping this part. And I'll be reaching to an overview. The overview of our study uh, was uh, like to, to, as I have already mentioned, that a lot of waste issues were there. So specifying ourselves to which ways to select for uh, different uh, valuable compounds, and then we reached to the uh, fin uh, you know, final uh, uh, issue of having this ultrasound and microwave-assisted extraction uh, to achieve these uh, results. And uh, I'll be discussing uh, that again uh, in my uh, the experiments which I have done during uh, this uh, process. And here you can see that we worked on the peel of the, the citrus, and the citrus used was kino, uh, one of the varieties of citrus. And uh, in that, we uh, specified on ourselves onto the peels, and we dried the peels in, in a, a solar dryer, which was designed and developed in our department. And then we uh, uh, reduced its size to the powder form after drying it. And this powder was then stored and saved for the experiments. And various experiments when, were done. And the overview of the study uh, was that uh, from this agro waste, we prepared a sample. And then we moved to the extraction techniques, that is microwave assisted and ultrasound assisted extraction techniques. And when we moved into the first extraction, there we achieved certain biochemical or bioactive compounds which were very effective very valuable compounds and which could have been used in the uh, food people uh, food uh, and uh, and uh, then uh, there was still some slurry left because our objective was to achieve zero waste so in this first phase we achieved certain results certain part of it uh, was valorized to the waste but there was still some waste left and that waste, which was still left in the first phase, it was turned into the second phase and second extraction process was uh, done. And in that second extraction process, we uh, discovered certain other components which were uh, present, already present, but were not able to uh, get extracted in the first process of extraction. And that uh, pro product, uh, like pectin, it was extracted in the second phase of extraction. And that pectin was again used in the food products. And both these food products, which uh, we had extracted, the compounds which we extracted from these uh, extractions, they were used by the local industries as, as well, because we had the tie-ups with the industries, food industries, and they were uh, really happy to uh, you know, work with us. And when we uh, incorporated those products into their food products, they showed very good results, as we have worked on that also, and the post uh, storage techniques and other effects uh, which could have taken place in those food products. And uh, um, after two extraction processes, there was still some residue left. So we were still left with the objective of achieving zero waste. So that waste was again utilized and somehow we developed a technique of carbonizing that uh, waste. And then we were able to form activated carbon from that. And that activated carbon uh, was used in the storage processes and it was used in place of silica gel and other products to uh, uh, lower the moisture content in uh, various products. So in this way, I can't describe that in detail, what exactly were the, you know, uh, what exactly were the steps and other processes. I'm giving you an overview uh, of the study uh, to make it a bit simpler, to let people to know what exactly I have done and what exactly I'm trying to do. 
and what uh, and why I call this a futuristic food engineering process because by this model which I have developed uh, we will be able and we were able to achieve uh, the waste uh, to the zero waste we are trying to reduce this waste to the zero waste and somehow because of this model uh, we achieved uh, this process and I won't say this was the end of it uh, we are still working at, for this and these are some of the results which I'll uh, try to you know, explain uh, like here uh, on uh, on the vertical side you can see the different chemicals which were used for extraction and uh, on the horizontal side uh, these are the techniques uh, four uh, specified techniques and uh, the first one is the traditional technique because it took us around two hours uh, for the extraction of those compounds and other three are the novel techniques first one is ultrasound second one is microwave and third one was the combined effect of both uh, ultrasound and microwave and and uh, you can see that combined effect showed the best results but because of the economical point of view we didn't work on that uh, the ultrasound and microwave e extraction techniques individually showed very good results and they were somehow very much related as well and the only thing which uh, you know differentiated the, these two was that in case of ultrasound we were able to achieve these results which you are uh, you know seeing them uh, in the yellow uh, we were able to achieve this amount this is the percentage around 29 percent of the extract was achieved in five minutes only and in case of ultrasound it was around 30 minutes it took us 30 minutes to achieve around 33 percent so microwave type uh, microwave extraction was like within five minutes we were able to extract we were able to do one set of extraction and the second set of extraction was again done in five minutes so within few minutes we were able to reduce all of this waste to to a very good uh, valuable compounds and uh, these again are the results uh, in the graphical form and these were the different components these are the chemical names of the components which was uh, which were achieved and they were all phytochemical compound components and they had very good antioxidant activities antimicrobial activities and they were very uh, effective uh, as an, an antioxidant uh, you know uh, components in food materials and finally concluding my talk here is that uh, uh, as i have already mentioned that this was not the end of it i'm still working on it and and we were able to achieve results at the lab level and those products which were extracted uh, during the lab operations those were used uh, by various industries as well and they have effectively used it and we are still working with those industries for uh, this uh, these waste uh, regarding issues and there are certain components like we are trying to use water as a solvent in place of the chemicals which have, we have already used. We are trying to use water as a, you know, since it's a universal solvent. So we are trying to uh, work with water to achieve these results. But, uh, but the outcome of the study was like, uh, it was a very good, very effective technique. And, and it took me around three years to three and a half years to achieve this feat. And somehow we were able to work on I have worked on maybe many components, but specifying ourselves to the citrus waste, we were very much effective and very much uh, resultant with this. And now we are trying with other wastes uh, as well, so that we will be, uh, you know, working on other waste and we will be developing certain protocols and certain indigenous equipments as well. We are working on equipments as well, so that an equipment is made in which you just throw the waste and within a few minutes you will be uh, you know reducing that waste to a valuable components and those valuable components which we have achieved uh, in the form of pectin or bioactive compounds or antimicrobial agents they can be used in the food products uh, in the uh, future and uh, finally i'll end my talk here uh, with this beautiful you know graphic that since uh, we uh, uh, it's like it's everybody's duty to work into these uh, social issues uh, since waste is one of them and I have a background in food and I'm trying to work in the waste related to the food but waste in general is a big problem and all of us need to work effectively work towards it and definitely we'll be able to achieve the goal uh, which will be sustainable uh, for the future as well and uh, again uh, as since I'm working on food so I'll 
end up by saying that these uh, are or the uh, you know objectives of achieving this uh, um, goals by reducing this waste to the no waste and i hope my technique of futuristic food engineering will definitely uh, try to solve this to a certain extent and i'll be happy to work uh, with other people from other countries as well to work together for achieving this feat thank you very much Uh, thank you, Dr. Yosef. We have one question from our audience. Uh, they're really curious about how can audi uh, ordinary people do not to waste the orange peel? <laughs> <laughs> um, so they can try to, um, uh, actually they can extract various components at the home as well if they uh, somehow try to work on it. Uh, we have simple essential oils those essential oils can be extracted if we need simple uh, certain glass uh, glassware for that definitely we can work them and ordinary people can also work on that um great so uh, we still have um, like three minutes to the end of this and then um, if we have someone like asking question in the chat box, please feel free to type the answer and answer them. Um, and also we have the networking session uh, for you to join the Slack channel and to talk with our audience too. So you can find a link in our chat box. Okay, sure. 